again, welcome to today's presentation on emotional, oops, emotional eating. My name is Shanti Douglas, and I'm a mindfulness and heart math certified trainer and coach here from Anthem EAP, which is your employee assistance program, a free confidential resource for you and your household members. And we can re really support you, especially if there's challenges that you have around emotional eating. You know, 2020 has really have had a feeling pretty wobbly about most everything in our life. And I'd love to hear from you right now, what is maybe a challenge that you have around eating? Like, why is this important for you to be here? Do you struggle with nighttime eating? Do you find that you, um, you know, you munch on things through the day, you're really not having that awareness of, of the eating? Is there not a line between um, different times of day? So what are some challenges you might be experiencing? around this particular topic, just to get an idea. Maybe you've got some of those uncontrollable urges. Just put whatever you'd like in the chat box. And again, not to worry what the chat box is saying. I can see that, so not to worry. All right, well, if anything comes up as we go through our time together, again, please feel free to put that messaging in there. So what is emotional eating? You know, I've been sharing and talking about emotional eating for, gosh, over, ooh, over a decade now. And I think it's such an important topic for our overall health and well-being. And emotional eating is something that pretty much comes on very, very quickly, right? It's different than physical hunger where, where there's, you know, a, uh, oh, I'm a little bit hungry or I'm more hungry, oh, I really need to eat, oh, I really need to eat sort of thing when we haven't been listening to those hunger cues that we might have, whether we're busy or whatever the reason is for that. Emotional hunger can come on very, very, very suddenly. So say for instance, you know, you're, you're working really hard and you get a phone call from someone and it's a very disruptive phone call. There's not good news there. We may, might automatically go to the kitchen and grab something to eat as a way of soothing that emotion, that trigger that we have in our emotional realm. Um, we can also get lots of cravings through the day, even though we might not be hungry for it. You know, maybe we're eating lots of sugars, dark chocolate, crunchy things. We'll take a look at a slide in a few moments about what are some of those, uh, what does that relate to? But with that emotional hunger, as I say, would an apple do it, right? Would an apple or an orange or a carrot or something, would that satisfy you, that hunger and that craving that you have? And for most of us, that would be, no way, I want that chocolate chip cookie, I want that ice cream, where is that decadent cake sort of thing. So that can also give us an indicator that, all right, it's not my body that's hunger, hungry, it's my emotions that's hungry. And we can develop habits around emotional eating. So when is a time that you find yourself more connected to that emotional eating versus that physical hunger eating? Is there a certain time during the day or an event that precipitates that? Just put that in the chat box. Somebody sharing stress. Yeah, stress activates that emotional eating, right? Maybe too many things to do or interruptions or you don't have that time to take that break, things like that. What other times do you find that you emotionally eat? Late at night, yes, right? When uh, the, the world has gotten a little bit quiet and maybe I don't have the energy to go for that walk or maybe it's too late for that. Or, you know, I haven't set myself up with 
I don't know, something else like a nice bath or a conversation or painting, some kind of hobby, something like that. So late at night, that can be something sitting on the couch, sitting in bed, anything like that. Um, also, after at the end of the work day, then we have a bigger period of time and we might actually eat a bigger meal then than we normally do through the day. So that can be another triggering time for us. So when we're looking, any time that we're looking to eat, we want to step back and say, what am I feeding here? Am I feeding my body because it's hungry, it needs some nourishment, it needs some energy, right? Food is definitely a way that we get some energy for our body. Or is it because there's an emotional component or I'm trying to calm that stress response, you know, in between that busyness that I have? Or maybe there's a reward that I have, right? I remember when my kids were growing up, I, I feel really badly that I used to do this, but it was like, hey, you got good grades, let's go celebrate with ice cream or pizza, something like that, right? Um, we also eat for pleasure. I mean, think about that. Um, eating is a way that we come together. There's so many celebrations. I don't know of, of one celebration that we do not have that we have that doesn't contain food, right? It's always a big part of it. So again, we have these associations with food as connection, as vitality, of soothing, all of those things. And sometimes that those messages can just get mixed up. So when you're looking at your history with food, what does that look like? You know, perhaps you grew up it with an abundance of food, or maybe it was not an abundance and it was very um, small portions. Maybe, you know, there wasn't a lot of food in the home. Maybe there wasn't a lot of experimentation with different foods. Maybe you didn't have fresh fruits and vegetables readily there, or, you know, maybe there wasn't any different offering there. How do we relate to our body? How many diets have you been on? How many times have we tried to eat or starve ourselves into losing those five or 10 pounds that maybe were really easy to do when we were a teenager, but no longer is. So we want to look at our challenge with food and our relationship to food and how is it supporting me and how is it not supporting me? Not that we want to get rid of food, but we want to kind of change what's healthy to, um, you know, changing what's not healthy to bringing in health. So this is a very interesting slide here, and it relates to um, some of the amino acids and the minerals and the nutrients that our body know its needs, and it can be tied to our mood. So typically, you know, if we're wanting chocolate, sweets, maybe we're looking for love, maybe we're looking for that connection sort of thing. Salty, crunchy things, I usually find that this is a stress response, right? Instead of me being able to get out and pound on the pavement or go for a bike ride or even take a few moments to do jumping jacks, I'm in a meeting tied to my desk, I'm gonna crunch on some pretzels. At least I'll get some stress relief in my jaw sort of thing. Spices, right? Look at the times that you want spices. Oh, I want some salsa or I want, you know, a really spicy chili or something like that. Maybe we're feeling in a rut. Maybe we want to, AKA, spice up our life as well. So it just can be really interesting to know that there is a relationship between what the body is craving and some of the emotional components there as well. So some things when we're looking to find out, are we an emotional eater? Do we remember what we ate today? So was there purpose and intention and attention to our food? Like, do you remember what you had for breakfast, right? At the end of the day, do you remember the little snacks that maybe you've had in between or were they grab and go sort of things? Was I hungry? physically hungry when I ate this food? Did I eat by myself, right? Which means that maybe we're not sitting down with the family. But of course, if we're living alone, then we're probably eating by ourselves. Are we eating in front of the computer or some other distraction as well that really has it so that we eat more than we really need or want to? 
is it hard to stop, right? Think about that bag of chips or cookies or popcorn, right? It's really hard to stop. And do you feel like you don't have any control over it? Does anybody have any food item that, you know what? Oh, my willpower just falls apart when I have this food, quote unquote, food in front of me. Anybody have anything that's a real trigger for them? I know for me it's chocolate. And chocolate used to give me really bad headaches and I wish it did, but it doesn't anymore, right? But oh my gosh, like I just like don't even buy it. So we're gonna, we're gonna have our um, willpower at the grocery store. So somebody's sharing mac and cheese, ice cream and chocolate, it's terrible, right? Yeah, so we know that these are our weaknesses. Let's really try to not even have it be in our environment. And it's good to know what they are, right? Mac and cheese, dairy, comfort food, right? Soothing, all of that sort of thing. Um, yeah, we gain lots of comfort from food, which is one of the reasons why it's hard to stick to a more defined, rigid diet plan, right? Diet, there's the word die in diet. And what we want to do instead is to create a lifestyle. It doesn't mean that we can't have mac and cheese or chocolate or ice cream. It's all in the portion size. And when we bring a mindful um, setting to it, when we are here with just it, not in my mind with anything else, not in front of a screen, not in, even in front of other people, when I can just be right here and close my eyes and, oh, what does this taste like? How is it? changing in my mouth, how is my body receiving it? We're slowing down our eating with these decadent things for ourselves. And then what we notice is that we probably don't eat as much as we would. A lot of emotional eating is because we're eating it so quickly, right? We're trying to get rid of that emotional response that we have. So if we slow down and we create a different relationship to ourselves and our food, then that really helps to um, just switch it up. And we can bring in a mindful moment or two with our food. So the first thing in changing this is obviously to have awareness. What are my weak points? How are they showing up? Like if I'm really tired, if I didn't sleep well last night, if I'm really busy, if I haven't taken breaks or I haven't exercised or, you know, whatever it is for you, you fill in your own blank there, that's good information because we want to then readjust our life so that we don't have as many of those things. So if you know that you eat more emotionally when your day is back to back to back, create some space. Right? Or if you um, don't sleep very well or you haven't gotten enough sleep, we address the sleep issue. We also know that lots of our hormones rebalance during sleep and some of them are related to our cravings and our satiability as well. We want to visualize ourselves being healthier. What would it look like in my life? What could I insert instead of that ice cream and chocolate, that mac and cheese, or whatever that is for you. What might be one thing that you can do instead of that emotional eating? Put, put it, uh, just any response in the chat box. How can you support yourself instead of the eating? What's a way that you can support? Yeah, exercise, go for a walk. And, and even if it's, you know, raining out or snowing out or whatever it is out, too hot out, maybe I, you know, just get on the floor and do 10 sit-ups or three push-ups or, um, you know, some lunges, a few yoga poses, whatever. What we want to do is switch it up. Now, somebody else is sharing walking, getting up and moving, going to bed earlier, calling a friend, yes. Um, and having, so one of the things I recommend is to have a list of like 10 or 15, even 20 things, possibilities that you can do right by where you usually 
emotionally eat. So if it's on the couch, you put it on the table, uh, the coffee table, you might even have, you know, some like artwork there or some painting or a book or um, a bowl of grapes or an apple there, or something like that, that will give you an immediate response to that craving that you have. Because if, if we've got to get up and do something really hugely different, when we're being attacked by that emotional cue, it's probably not going to happen as skillfully or as frequently as we want. We can put sticky notes on the refrigerator, on the cupboards, um, little reminders, you know, to, hey, do this instead. Um, we can wait 10 seconds. There's Kelly McGonigal, she's a PhD out of Stanford. She talks about the immediate gratification we get in the midbrain, our reward center. And regardless of the consequences, even if we know that, you know, ah, I shouldn't be having that chocolate right now or that ice cream, our prefrontal cortex is basically overridden by those cravings that we have that come on so, so quickly. Well, just like a stress response, think of them that way. So give yourself 10 minutes, do something completely differently. Maybe you agree that before you ever eat anything, you're gonna have a glass of water, right? So that'll give you a little bit of that breaking point where you can count to a 60, right? You're just gonna count 60 seconds, that's it. Or you do five push-ups. somehow insert something very easy and swift that you can bring along any time um, to break it up so that you're really stepping back from that initial getting caught, you could say. So some other things you want to do, make sure that we're eating breakfast. A lot of times we may not eat breakfast, we're not breaking that fast, and then, or we're having a lot of sugary items for breakfast right, cereals, um, you know, uh, breads with lots of jam and stuff, and that keeps our blood sugar level uh, spiking up and down through the day, which means that we're probably setting ourselves up for lots of sugar and processed through foods through the day. Not letting yourself get too hungry, aka hangry, right? Remember when we like rip open the cupboards in the refrigerator and we just eat whatever is there because I've waited too long. On that scale of hunger, you know, one to 10, we wanna eat between like, yeah, three and a half, four to like seven. And we don't need to eat a huge meal. We can just keep ourselves continually satisfied. That's okay. And when we do eat, being there, just eating, right? So when you eat, just eat. When you drink, just drink. All of those things. We also want to have a plan for our emotions. 2020, we have been all of these things and back and forth in less than five or 10 minutes, and we're still going that way. So we know ourselves. We know to shut the news off. We know to not be on social media as much. We know who is a good person to talk to that's uplifting and rebalancing versus those that are just, you know, not having us go into a very good place. And then of course, we want to make sure to support ourselves and our emotions. The Employee Assistance Program is completely here for that. I'll share more about that in a moment. And then other things we wanna do is make sure to get up and out. We break the stagnation and the stress response by moving our body. It's actually one of the best ways to release that agitation and that buildup during the day. Get up every hour for one to two minutes. A study just came out from 2015 actually that showed that people who do that have a um, reduced rate of premature death of any cause by 30%. So that's a really great statistic there. Um, learn to relax. Again, because a lot of our emotional eating is stress related. So what's a way that you bring in ease through the day or relaxation or calmness? What do you do to like chill out or as my middle child would say, chillax? How do you chillax? 
Now, listening to music, great music, so varied and can bring you to any mood. Yeah, and that might be a filler that you have, right? Instead of eating something, I'm just gonna listen to one song and then I can go eat, sure. I'm just gonna listen to one song. Um, after work, sit on my couch, I read. Great. So whatever you need to do to give yourself a break is really important. And I think hydration is key. Our body needs a huge amount of that anyways. And then having a sticky note or a reminder or a color or a rock or whatever you need as a, as a recollection, every time before you eat, this is what I do. I take one minute, one, 30 seconds out of that one minute to Take three deep, slow breaths. This helps my body to, re to relax. It helps my digestive system relax. And it helps me to be more present. And then the next 30 seconds is looking at my food and offering appreciation for it. Thinking about who made it, how it came to be for me, and how and what about it I'm enjoying. And then I take that first bite close my eyes and notice the textures, the scents, the changing dynamic of that. So just that little bit of a break slows you down and you can continue doing that as you eat your meal. Maybe the first five minutes of a meal, the first three bites, whatever it may be. Can dehydration lead to a false sense of hunger? Um, yes, we oftentimes, we may be dehydrated or tired and we'll see that as a time to eat. I know for me, I see food as energy. So oftentimes I'll eat when actually what I need is a nap or just a rest moment or I'm thirsty. So yes, those two are, those are very connected. You can have an eating buddy, you know, at any time we have that buddy for whatever, I think it's really great. So that might be somebody within your home, somebody within your workplace, a friend that you have, you can just text them. You can create an intention for the morning. Um, I'd also really recommend, I always recommend to have a meal plan through the day and really try to stick with it and having bright lines, like having a time where you stop eating at the end of the day. Um, you know, six o'clock, at least three hours before you go to bed so that your body has time to digest food and to relax so you can actually sleep better then as well. So they're all tied in together. And then not having such a bigger dinner you know, that's usually what we haven't historically had as our biggest meal. So maybe cutting it down by a third and then a third and slowing down again when we're eating, not eating in front of screens. I know that's a real challenge for, for many folks. So even if you just start with that, like I'm not gonna eat in front of a screen, I'm gonna eat at the table and I'm going to be there. Have a 20 minute meal. See if time yourself, see how long it takes to eat. Play games around that. Even if you have kids, you know, okay, how many times can you chew that bite that's in your mouth? 10, 20, like have a little contest about it sort of thing. So we've got to bring in some fun into this changing relationship. And then of course we want to look at our emotions and what is there for us. What is asking to be fed? And this is definitely where the Employee Assistance Program can come in. We are a free confidential resource for you and your household members. Would really recommend that everyone at least check out the website at anthemeap.com. Your login is SISC, or you can give us a call at the toll-free number. But we have lots of support around anything, uh, finances, legal, elder care, um, child care, um, stress management, healthy eating, um, connecting you with a nutritionist, with a coach, with um, you know, exercise programs, healthy recipes, 
whatever it is that you might need, not just related to this topic, but really the topic of your life, which is so important. So we've just got about another minute or so. I wanna see if there's any questions, any comments. I know we didn't have a ton of time here today. I hope there was some good reminders that you'll take away. And any, any other questions you have? I love the resources, great, yes. And then maybe start with a program of, okay, I'm gonna have one more vegetable today. And I love um, allrecipes.com as a great resource for, you know, you just put in a uh, one food item, what do I do with eggplant? And it will come up with lots of different recipes. But getting engaged in our food plan in this way and then, of course, celebrating yourself. Celebrate immediately and intensely every time that you don't engage with that old habit and really start installing something new. Insert yourself into your life in a positive way. You are so worth it. And um, just even just the small changes can balloon and mushroom out to much bigger things. So thanks so much for being here. Really, really appreciate your time and your attention. Stay well, everyone.